What's up guys, I'm James and welcome back to the Great Gambino channel. In this video, I will be showing you how to stream your PC virtual reality games to your Oculus Quest 2. We will be covering all software needed to get you up and running. In addition, I will also show you how to connect and play with the Oculus Link cable. And to close things out, I will be giving you a gameplay example of Half-Life Alex running on the wireless setup. If you would like to skip ahead to any of these sections, I will have timestamps down below to save you some time. After doing much research, I narrowed down my options to this Asus RT AX 86U AX5700 Wi-Fi 6 gaming router. I felt this was a good choice because it had options to prioritize game streaming and even has a port dedicated to gaming. I purchased this unit for around $250, but there are many other options in different price ranges that would get the job done. Keep in mind, you are going to need a PC that is capable of running virtual reality applications. The PC I will be using has 64 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, a Ryzen 9 processor, and an RTX 3070 GPU. You can check on the Oculus site to see if your specs meet the requirements. If your PC packs all the power you need, but your internet speed is not up to par, you can still play PC VR on your Quest using an Oculus Link cable. The one I have here is a third-party Kiwi Design cable that costed around $39 and is 16 feet long. It comes with a USB on one end and an L-shaped USB-C on the other. When connecting, it is as simple as plugging it into the USB-C outlet on the outside of the Quest and then running the cord along the head strap, fastening it in with the included Velcro at the base. The last step is to plug the opposing end into your PC. Once you are in the headset, assuming you have the Oculus app installed on your PC, an option will come up offering you to enable Oculus Link. Select Enable. Your headset view will be transported to the PC VR menu, offering you access to play your higher end games. If for some reason the enable option does not come up, do not remove the headset, but simply unplug and reinsert the USB-C connection. This should re-trigger the option to enable. Getting back to streaming, you are going to need a few software applications on your PC. First, you want to make sure you have the Oculus Home app. This can be downloaded on the Oculus website, and you have to have it up and running to connect. I also recommend downloading the Steam VR app within Oculus for running Steam games. The next app you will need to download and have running is Virtual Desktop Streamer. This is a free app and I will have a link down below in the description. The next piece of software you will find once in the headset. Go to the store and search Desk. It should bring up Virtual Desktop. This app will cost you $20 at the time of making this video. I have already purchased it, so I'm just going to click Open. Once in, you will see this menu screen and your PC desktop will pop up in the background. The next area is where some people get confused loading games. You want to avoid using the Oculus app on the mirrored PC image. Instead, you want to bring up the Headset Stream internal menu by pressing the Menu button on the left touch controller. It will bring this black box menu you up and the first thing you want to do is make sure you are connected to your Windows PC as you can see here in the center. Then you want to scroll down on the left menu until you can find and select games. This will bring up all of your options available and be the place where you want to launch your applications from. We are going to test it out by running Half-Life Alex. The example footage you are about to see was recorded in 2K resolution on my PC while I was streaming to the headset. You're going to want to put that in here too. To wrap up this video, I am extremely impressed with how well this works. Being able to play wireless PC quality VR is like a dream come true. I played for about an hour and did have a little glitch lag once or twice in that time frame, but it was almost unnoticeable. In my opinion, I could deal with a slight glitch every once in a blue moon as a toss up from being tangled up with a cord during my session. I think it's a worthwhile trade off. So thank you for watching this video, and if it did help you out, I would really appreciate it if you'd hit the like button. Thank you for sticking with me all the way until the end, and I will catch you in the next one. 